And a good day, everybody. It's Ron Anderson, Pierre, the Beverage Ramble, back again with you. Another Beverage Ramble edition in my apartment. Hey. Today, we're looking at Terrapin Los Bravos, Mexican style lager. Very good, good score on Beer Advocate. Gets an 82, 5.1% ABV. It's a Vienna style lager. Of course, Terrapin was independent, based here in Athens, Georgia, now under the Molson Coors family. Of course, Molson Coors are doing a lot of things. More on that coming up. So, here's the beer. I purchased this, purchased this at QT, Quick Trip, if you don't know. Uh, these are the several, uh, many service stations here in the uh, Georgia area. Mostly in the Atlanta area that I've seen them in. Um, but so uh, purchases there, paid about what two something for this beer. It was a little bit more than what I paid for it. But anyway, it was, you know, I said, okay, I've had a lot of beers I've had from Terrapin, so might as well try this one. So, of course, Terrapin known for their high five IPA. Um, they've had their Luau Tropical, I uh, Tropical IPA, and so on and so forth. But and a recreational pale ale too. So those are probably the two popular ones from Terrapin. So again, Athens, Georgia, which I guess maybe a good. This isn't that far, maybe an hour, hour and a half away from the Atlanta area, so. Picking up most like you just, standard Vienna style lagers, and most of them. Um, one that may, has that kind of the same aroma, maybe a little bit of Victor Victoria. But that has a smaller ABV. This is a little bit higher, but kind of the same. I'm not gonna go um, Modelo Negra. I'm not gonna go there. Little, not not something I would compare this to that, but you know. It's a nice fragrance, so here we go. A nice sweetness going down to this. It's a little. A tad hinge of sweetness, not much, but just a tad. A tinge. A tad, a tinge. I'm sorry. Pretty good. A little bite down finish going to, to the end of it. So, you know, it's, a, it's all right. I mean, you know, not stellar, but okay. So, <clears throat> some water I got to do this one too. Um, I think what is it, 2015, 2016, I believe that um, Terrapin, uh, being independent, um, sold their interests to Molson Miller Coors. And of course, Miller Coors ended up becoming Molson Coors um, because of their relationship. And then in 2016, they ended up buying the whole company outright. So now they're they're the parent company of Terrapin. At least they've kept it and the family, meaning they continue brewing beers at their facility in Athens and many others, maybe across from Atlanta and other parts of Georgia. But you know, kept the beer. But most of the times when these partnerships happen, take place, or mergers, or when a big BMC or a big boy conglomerate takes over, the main thing is always about distribution. Distribution, distribution, distribution. 
if, if a guy or, or a gal visits Georgia, coming from Massachusetts or coming from Michigan and, you know, Missouri, you know, comes to visit Georgia and they sample some beer like this, they'll always say, man, awesome. I'd really love to get this beer where I'm at. Usually that's kind of how those mergers begin to, begin to take place. So, And we're seeing this with Molson Coors now. They have an agreement with uh, DG Yingling and Sons, of course, you know, people behind Yingling. Traditional lager and some of the others, of course, the daughters. You know, now Dick Engling has sort of remained with the company, but now the daughters, all four daughters, are in, are running the day to day operation. So, and um, and yeah, now Yingling will be going further further out west, since they pretty much got a good hold of the east coast, so east west of the Mississippi River. So. Molson Chorus were able to help them with that. I don't know if they're going to be selling, but we'll. But hey, I'm sure they'll say, "Hey guys, you know, y'all really not involved. Let me just take the take this brewery off your hands. I know it's been in the family for centuries, so let me give you a nice little offer." And bam. I'm not saying they will, but you know, it'll happen. But you know, who knows? You know, money talks, BS walks, but. And so that's what Terrapin has gotten involved in. So it's it's been uh, successful um, for so far. The partnership has worked out well with Terrapin and Molson Coors. Um, as far as Molson Coors, I'm sure many of you have noticed, known, saw the article. They will be discontinuing some brand of beers. I guess putting more focus on the. Uh, the lines of more streamlining their products, more more stronger beers, but also more into the seltzers and the more you know sophisticated mixed drinks, which we've been grown in popularity over the last three years now. I mean, especially the last two years, even with the pandemic, it's been just insane what we've been seeing hard seltzers and, you know, mixed cocktails in a can, and, you know, f you know, more flavored beers. So they're discontinuing a lot of brands, brands that are very popular, even to a lot of you who watch my channel, they're very popular with me too. Uh, Keystone Ice, um, uh, Michelob's Best Premium, that's going. Um, Ice House Edge, those are one, the three, three of the 11 beers they're getting rid of. Um, my little High Life Light, you know, I guess you're looking at it and say, hey, you know, you know, we got Miller High Life Light, but also we got Keystone Light, so we do we really need this other one? And of course, you know, there are other premium, more expensive white beers, you know, but, you know, Miller White, Coors Light. Yeah. You know. And of course the budget ones, they already have two. Keystone Light is a bu uh, is a budget beer and Milwaukee's Best Light, which will remain, but the premium will go. Which makes a little odd sense, but you know. hey, they do this, they do this because for whatever reasons, I don't know. But anyway. So that is the focus and more on their craft beer, so I'm sure this is not the only craft that they own. I'm sure there are plenty others. And of course, uh, AB InBev owns quite a few. They're involved in, have their hands in that. So, this is an interesting time in the beer community. So, um, but in any event, um, as for this beer, Los Bravos, um, it's very good. Um, I'm not going to say it's great, it's good. Um, Of course, typical standard Mexican food what comes to mind. It does have the sense of tea, a little sweetness to it. it reminds me a little bit more of Victoria. Um, if you had Victoria beer, you, you'll know what I'm talking about. That's a group of Modelo product. So, seeing a lot of these um, in the store, I know Chihuahua has a Mexican style beer, Mex celebrating the Mexican culture. I mean, 
for the price of this can, I don't know, uh, Victoria's a little more reasonable lead price. Same with, um, uh, the Corona, yeah, you could say. That's also part of Grupo Mandel. Soul, the other Mexican lagers, uh, Tecate, Tecata, you know, uh, uh, Dos Equis, you know, all of them, you know. Then you have others like you know, Superior and all that, you know. Yeah, all great, you know, but Victoria's probably more reasonably priced, you know, versus, say, something like this from Terrapin. Uh, that's just my view on that, so. Um, a good thing was I bought it in single, so, you know. Uh, not the deadly six pack. I'll be like, hmm, huh, sticker shock. Ooh, wow. All right, I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna put over my time right now. Um, good beer, Barterpin, Los Bravos, good. My little bit of Victoria was a little more cheaper, but you can get this for. I mean, you get that Victoria for cheaper for half the price versus this one. So um, I'm gonna leave it right there. So B score, that'd be an eight for the for Terrapin, Los Bravos. Eight score, yeah. Eight point eight. Eight, eight point zero. Uh, Johnny here the Beverage Ramble. So keep on watching. As always, cheers. Live, laugh, and love. Los Bravos. Los Bravos. Mexicana beer. Yay.